you just want to say like who you are and what you're working for? Sure. Uh, I'm Dave Shirley from uh, the States. I'm reporting for uh, Deadspin.com, which is a sports all-inclusive. It's really sort of like sports gossip. Like they publish, you know, like cell phone pictures that athletes have and, sent and to like this. That's what they're mo- most famous yeah, for is like Brett You hear these guys covering the record. Yes. Yes. How did you get that here? Chris, my mate who's yet to arrive, uh, worked for McSweeney's in San Francisco, which is a publishing company started by Dave Eggers, who's a semi-famous writer in the States. About as famous as you can be, be a writer these days, at least a novelist. Um, and so he was sort of in the sort of West Coast literary scene for a while, on a low level. Um, uh, he was doing like research and copy editing and stuff, and doing a bit of writing. And so he knew through contacts the editor of Deadspin, Tommy Craigs. And we had, we'd been talking about going to this World Cup since the last World Cup when we were in college, and, you know, watching it like on the big screen in a frat house at whatever time in the morning it was because it was France. And like I was hoping to come anyway, although I'm sort of I was in between things and you know living in my parents' basement. In the world. Seriously, I went straight from my parents' basement to the World Cup. Um, and he's like, we, and I talked to him over Christmas at like three in the morning. It was one of those like drunk Christmas catch up calls. And he's like, dude, we should go to the World Cup. And I was just like, well, yeah, we should, but you know, it's expensive. It's easy. what are we gonna do to go to the World Cup? And he's like, if I can figure out a way for us to get to the World Cup, will you come with me? And I'm like, well, yeah. And so we wrote a pitch letter to Deadspin, and they're like, we can't pay you very much, but we'll try to, we'll like, we'll be your source to apply for press credentials. So we wrote a pitch letter to the World Cup people, got rejected the first time, which is a crushing, crushing day. Did they, did they say why it was it just? Yep, yeah, it was just like. <laughs> You guys are, you know, you can't yeah, report yeah. on the World Cup like you do in New Zealand. Like one of those sternly worded formal letters, just like sincerely, whomever at the IRB. Yeah. So we wrote back, and we're like, no, seriously, like, don't take, you know, the website they're writing for. Like, take it with a grain of salt. Like, we're legit. We can write. Like, we know rugby. We love rugby. We want to, you know, bring it to an American audience. Like, let us do this. Then they did. And so we went from getting rejected to having tickets to the first game of the World Cup. So, you're bringing rugby to the Americans. We hope so. We're, we're at least bringing a perspective to the American audience. Yeah. I mean, it's great. It's great to be covering rugby right now as an American because the sport is growing in America, but there's not a lot of media. I mean, wait, wait, not a lot of American rugby. journalists yeah. know enough about rugby to write about it. Yeah, you should hear that yeah, whenever yeah. there's rugby on TV that has American commentators, it's just awful. <laughs> like, I could, we could get in the booth and do a better job. And probably get those NBC well, Blazers, too, which is sweet. Water, so, <laughs> um, so it's good. I mean, I don't know how much it will grow, whether this will turn into anything for me, but to be sort of in on what's sort of the ground floor in a growing sport on the media side is fantastic, because since Sevens has been in the Olympics, NBC has the rights to the Olympics, so they promote Olympic sports a lot, and so they've been showing Sevens on TV for the last year, which is cool. The only thing I worry about is that people in America will think that Sevens is rugby. Not that it isn't rugby, but that seven, like rugby is just Sevens. I mean, I don't know what the reception has been, and our editor hasn't really let us know too much, but yeah. even if one person gets turned on to the game from what we're doing, or from in the World Cup and maybe what we're doing, then I feel like it's totally been worth all really our effort, which is really that much of effort. They've heard of it. It's sort of, I think rugby, unfortunately, in the States is sort of viewed as like a drunken college game, because that's, for the longest time, what it's been. You know, people don't really play when they're young in the States. Um, it's growing at, at well, a younger level. Most people me, who, who play rugby well, either picked it up in college or yeah, military. Me, it's actually pretty popular like in the military. Just walking. Interesting. Yeah, because I assume uh, New Zealanders would probably know about as much about gridiron as we do about rugby. Even though I guess you have ESPN here and stuff, so there might we be do. highlights. And ESPN shows rugby. Yes, well, I, they assume they do here. Yeah. They do a little bit in the States. They showed uh, both USA Canada test matches last year. How have you liked New Zealand? How have I liked New Zealand? has been fantastic. Like, we can't use. I might have a future in illegal immigration. Like, I just don't really want to have ethanol in it. Because um, which is fine. It, it, it's been great. Like I said, we paid for a bed for the first time yeah, yeah, last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two weeks. You know what? I mean, um, so I mean, we knew a couple people going in because Chris played rugby in San Francisco, so there are a lot of they had like an exchange program with the club and actually Christchurch, which is sort of unfortunate for the World Cup. But they put us in touch with a lot of people. Like he studied abroad in Denmark with a girl from Auckland, so we stayed with her family. But then, I mean, like I said, we just showed up in New Zealand with no idea. Half an hour later, we're drinking beer at a rugby club and watching the game with beds, well, beds of a, of a kind. Yeah. 
So, as far as the fans go, All Blacks games have been really interesting because I feel like they're so much tied up in the All Blacks mm. that everyone's sort of too nervous or intensive to really cheer. Do you know what I mean? We have, we have way too nervous about the whole damn thing. The atmosphere at All Blacks games is the most surprising thing. Like, I thought the opening ceremonies would just be insanely crazy. You want to introduce Chris Willie? Ladies and gentlemen, the man in flannel. Hey, the grizzled veteran of many a campaign, many, many a campaign. Christopher Benz of Anchorage, Alaska, as you can tell. Hello, hello everybody. <laughs> um, my mate, how does, co-writer. How does beer get involved in this interview? Um, so Americans have an objection to, to letting um, them know that we're doing things wrong. It's just like outlaw theory. Like if you give yeah. them a fucking nut job, like you gotta be super careful about the other stuff, you know? Like, if we're gonna be pushing all the rules everywhere else, we can't blatantly break no, that's and true. Or, you can drink at the game. You just can't get drunk. drunk. But now with the uh, non-sponsored uh, booze. What I'm saying, oh, yeah. oh. but I'm just saying in general, like my my philosophy is, is yeah, like we're gonna be like you know, fuck up everywhere. Not fuck up. But, like, you're gonna just push the limits in one place. You gotta have your ass covered in the other place. So, Chris you know, has Hunter, Hunter S. Thompson style. Chris has yeah. Yeah. Chris has scruples. I also have scruples. That's also I'm, on. The, that's, I'm, a, that's, a, that's a different thing. I'm freshly <laughs> out. And then we had a we had a USA and Russia tug of war outside the stadium before the game. Those are the dirty Russians. And then here are the good old U.S. of A. And it turns out you know, they tried it two different ways. It turns out. If your side is on the uphill side of a tug of war, you do better at tugging than down. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we got to the It was it was a really fun night. Yeah, you and, were out, out to guys. Yeah. Yeah. And this is this is a Nelson, right? No, 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 Yeah, yeah. They were, I hear Nelson is like uh, yep. they're really excited about being at a venue. And yeah. I hear, like all the like it's from the volunteers. They're saying that like the best place to work is Nelson because everyone is so nice. Like all the volunteers want assignments in Nelson. Cool. It's, it's, uh, yeah. I guess it's just like people are excited about the game. So it's super nice. And they're just like, thanks for being in our town. So, so they're both Kiwis, so it's nice to see them supporting it. Well, yeah, and again, this is, um, yeah, like Chris interrupted you talking nicely about our country. I did. Um, so, <laughs> but I mean, have you noticed it? Like people are doing this, like random, random Kiwis for no reason. Going, I you know I went to America once, so now I'm supporting it. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, the Irish obviously too, they, they came in droves. And the Irish tour as well as probably any country in the world. I think like. The Australia game proved that, although not everyone in the game was, uh, was Irish that night because they were playing Australia. But um, but we did we did ourselves proud, and I think most of the, especially for the Ireland game, most of the neutrals were were most of the Kiwi neutrals were pulling for us, and we're the underdog, which is weird for an American. We're not usually the underdog in anything. Like we're America, goddammit. So it's so it's kind of it's a weird feeling, but it's also kind of a cool feeling to like be an underdog. Because no one loves underdog. That's true. It's, is that right? So oh, yeah, we we love Americans love underdogs. Yeah. Oh, you love the yeah, underdogs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. To the, to the extent that like politically to succeed, you have to find your like position where you are fucking someone over and turn yourself into an underdog. <laughs> like you are like nope. you are a have, powerful uh, business. One more of the uh, West Coast. You gotta like you have to have take some much scary of my government can. entity pushing you around. Like you have like let's see. Uh, you know. But, like even in the in the sixties, like the, uh, the civil rights movement, like the way their rhetoric was like, look, government's telling us who we can't kick out of our restaurants and like segregate into our restrooms. It's not cool. Like people just pushing us around. I'm just some some poor white guy trying to live my life in a way that like you know uh, prevents yeah. black yeah. people from having opportunities. Yeah, but we don't need to talk about the civil rights movement. Or you're right. You're right. I'm gonna try. I've been. I've been thus far. I've been. I've avoided politics successfully this entire trip, right? Until we get on the internet. Oh, no, like. Uh, I think it's less. Sometimes it's political, but for the most part, it's just cultural. Like the Super Bowl is sort of like Christmas in America. Like everyone gets together with their friends and family and sits around and does the same thing. The only thing I can really think of politically is that baseball and Americana are really like football is the most popular sport. But I think baseball has a special place in like the collective American consciousness and hearts because I remember after September 11th. 
how big of a deal like baseball starting back up was, and the Yankees were in the World Series, and you know the president and threw out the first pitch, and that kind of like it was a one of those coming together moments that we had you know, after being sort of thrown off, thrown off horribly by September 11th. Like baseball was a big deal to have happen again, you know, because they canceled the season for like a week and they made it up, and so politically, like I think it's more of like one things politically are sort of not going well, or we've had a big crisis or something. <laughs> Sports is like comfort food for there. So do you think that... Pets, rugby is yeah, yeah, Oh, rugby and, and um, soccer. Yeah. I haven't taken a hold as much as they could have in America because they're not strictly American Yes, I think that's actually probably pretty true. I, I think there's another, that's another big part of this that you, you can't have TV commercials in the middle of a continuous yeah. super running game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like football, like if you look at, so baseball used to be the game yeah. of America yeah. for uh, yeah. the American pastime uh, during the radio age yeah. when, and it, I don't know if you know much about it, but it's a perfect sport for like, yeah. you can score at home and know, okay, there's a runner on third, there's a runner on first, you can follow along with a piece of paper and hear it. And it's fine, it's perfect for that. And then we get to a TV age, and the 60s, right when the NFL starts taking off, right when TV's getting in people's homes, it's a perfect sport to tell just yeah, yeah. football has, you know, your breaks every 30 seconds or whatever. I mean, yeah. There's time for timeouts, there's time for commercial breaks. And, uh, so, and there's time for them to break down these complicated plays and explain to you what just happened yeah. in this slump. Hmm. So it's... Uh, it's not the sport itself that is designed best for the business. And what I love about rugby is that it's a sport that's designed for players. Like you just, it's football it's designed is designed for a TV. It just happens to work. It really evolved. Really it's like football. It, the rules are the same. Yeah. The, the rules have evolved over time. But they, they, it's that they, uh, yeah, they, they fit. They fit. They fit no, they, it fits TV really well. And because football was. Pretty low on the sports totem pole in the states before television, mm -hmm. and the sort of rise of the NFL coincided with everyone having a TV in their living room. My uh, first question is, how do you think um, America's gone to the World Cup so far? Great. I think I think they played their hearts out. They were, I was really impressed against that. That the Black Panthers just so glad to see our final point of off. And, uh, you know, they beat Russia, which is their goal. So I think now it's kind of a pressure for the three last two games where they can have fun and show what they're making. Yeah, they've said as much. I mean, we talked to a couple of the guys, and I actually asked Todd Glover, the captain, who was one of, I would say, if there was a World Cup 15 right now, it'd be hard to keep him out of it, yeah. which is great to see, to have not only to play well as a team, but to have one guy really stand out on the world stage and sort of put his stamp on the World Cup and be like, I'm Todd Clever, I've got awesome hair, I'm number seven, and people are going to notice because I'm going to kick some ass, and he has been, it's been fantastic. I yeah. think, and we talked to a couple guys, and I asked, like I said, I asked Todd at the press conference, like whether they'd had this one, you know, circled on their calendar, and he sort of refused to say that they were looking toward this one. But then we talked to a couple of the guys in the in the mix room afterward, and they're like, "Yeah, this is this is the game we wanted, and we got it, and it feels awesome." Yeah. And so, and now they're like, now we're just gonna enjoy ourselves and just play our rugby. Like I think they've exceeded my expectations. I don't know about yours. Uh, the Ireland, the Ireland, the Ireland, Ireland game, game exceeded uh, my expectations, yeah. especially yeah. considering that Ireland team went on to beat Australia a week. Yeah. Mm. So like, yeah, I mean, I, don't know. I, I would love. I, they're not going to beat. Like, Italy's got a huge pack, and yeah. it's going to be a rough game. But I, I would love to see us win two games. I just don't see it happening. No, honestly, like I follow world rugby more than I follow the U.S. just because they've been disappointing. Their, their warm-up match has been disappointing. It's really hard to watch in the States. They don't play a lot of test matches. It's, it's easy, and it's easier to find a tri nations game than it is to see Oh, it's way easier. Matches. It is. Like, I've seen the U.S. How much did you miss there? Oh, I think my memory card's full. Oh.